Okay, so let's get this started. Um, as Natalie said, my name is Becky Street and I teach at University of Arkansas at Little Rock and I teach math, but really what we're going to talk about today can be used in any discipline, probably some disciplines even better than this one, than math because um, math can be a little dry, but I started using Google Slides in the early spring and I just started looking at them when classes moved all online. And so I was very happy about having some idea what to do because I think it's really helped me um, stay invested because it's hard sometimes when you don't get to see your students or be in front of the classroom. And I'll kind of walk you through what, we're, what, I'm, what my journey's been and what I do. And then I'm hoping afterwards we can kind of build a slide together. So if you're not familiar with how to do it, I can kind of show you some tips that I've learned. Um, Probably a lot of you guys are better at this than I am, so please feel free to share all your tips. So, um, my biggest worry when we first moved in the spring was how do I get everything from a face-to-face -face class onto a computer and keep students engaged, keep them interested, and keep them kind of on task. And so, I started using Google Slides. Um, I wanted something that was engaged and personalized and interactive and referring to my syllabus just wasn't going to cut it because at least when you have a face to face class, you can give reminders, you can um, talk through things, you can kind of see when students are confused or what they don't know about or point things out. But my syllabus is super long and I'm sure no student in the history of as long as I've been teaching has ever read it. I certainly haven't read it all. Um, a lot of it's boilerplate stuff that we have to do. And so it felt kind of impersonal and mean just to always say, go look at your syllabus when students would contact me with questions. So I kind of started working on a Google Slide Classroom. And here's an example of one of the ones I do. Um, I love them because they're super easy to share, really in two different forms. And I share them in both forms. I always share with PDF be, as a PDF because it's hyperlinked. So any student can just download it and click through all of the hyperlinks. But I also share it as PowerPoint. And I've had more and more students start saying they're using the PowerPoint instead. The fun thing about PowerPoint is they can see the animation. They can hear the little messages I leave them. They can see the transitions of classes and stuff. Obviously, on a PDF, you don't have those things. But both of them, I can just email to them. You can download onto Blackboard. You can download basically on any learning management system. Um, since I've started teaching my summer classes, everyone's online and it was an instant icebreaker because like the picture of my cat there, um, if you click on that, it takes you to a YouTube video of little kittens and so many students contacted me and said, oh, I love kittens or oh, I hate kittens, but it kind of, I got a lot more initial um, correspondence from my students than I ever had in regular on class online classes in the past. So I thought that was kind of fun. Um, most importantly, this slide right here is like a one stop shop. It has everything they need in a couple different forms, but they can click on something to get to the syllabus. They can click on something to get to the calendar. Um, they can go straight to our UALR online tutoring center. They can go to a graphing calculator. Um, basically everything that they need for the class is on this one slide and almost every photo or underlined thing has a link to it some of them are easter eggs like if they click on the toilet paper they get rick rolled which means they get um they hear that song never gonna let you go by rick astley and there's golden ticket has some extra points that they can earn I've been really surprised how engaged students have been and how interactive they are with it because I get emails all the time like, oh my gosh, you just rickrolled me or whatever. I think it's a, a lot easier to be creative this way than on your standard syllabus. It's definitely personalized. Since students can't see me in a face-to-face -face class or get to know me, um, I think they at least can know a little bit about me and I think it helps their comfort level. And it's definitely less intimidating than a seven page syllabus. I still have that and I still have to send it to them. But I, my guess is that students go through this a lot more than they ever did my syllabus. And so here's some observations, probably since I started in March, I've had about 200 students, so not a huge group, but I literally have not had a single email from any student since I started these slides in both my online and what used to be face-to-face -face students. 
that said, where is the syllabus located or when is the next test? For whatever reason, I think these slides, they actually pay attention or they know that they can access it with just going to one place. Um, I definitely have more engagement, virtual engagement, compared to my regular, my previous online classes without the slides. I have students that email me a lot more often and a lot of them will text me. I use uh, Remind the Remind app. I've had an increased number of office hour visits, which are now Zoom, but in the past, I could never get, I never can get anyone to come to my office face to face. I don't know how I'm gonna fix that if I ever get to go back, but um, I didn't have much luck with my online students before this, trying to even set up an online uh, office hour. Now I have had several, which I'm pretty happy about. I have a lot less late or missed work. Students just seem to, it's easier for them to know when things are due because of the slides. Um, I've had a lot of positive feedback from students just a couple days ago. One of my students wrote me an email just saying, I, I was so scared to take college algebra, but as soon as I saw your slide, I decided you might be fun and nice, and so I'm not as scared. And she loves cats, so that was good. Um, and mainly, this has just re-sparked my joy in teaching. I really have enjoyed doing this, and it's kind of, made me want to up my game every week. Um, basically what I'm doing for the summer is I give them their one initial slide at the beginning of class that kind of is where they can access everything they need for the whole semester. And then each week I add to the deck a to-do list and I'll kind of um, show you some examples in a minute, but your to-do list for week one and then I'll add week two. And so each Monday I email them the new longer deck and so they can still access old slides, but they kind of have their new current one. And um, as I've gone along, I've tried to be more and more creative and kind of make sure that I don't stop getting emails from students saying that they liked whatever. It's kind of helped me. Um, and also, I've had students who have taken the sequence of my classes, and I've had a couple online students who before said, even though I would always tell them to go use Khan Academy or use the online tutoring lab, they would never do it. But once the slide was there, it was so easy to just do one click and get there that they said they've actually started using those resources more. So I feel like I've had a lot of positive things happen, not just for me, because it's a lot of fun for me, but I think students have really appreciated it. So I'm just gonna show you here a couple samples of ones that I've done um, basically this summer. These are kind of the to-do list and I try to have a theme every time. And these can be like as elaborate or as simple as you want. Um, mine have tended to get more and more elaborate and my husband's gotten more and more tired of me playing with these all the time, but it, it really is fun. Um, so these are some examples. Here are some more examples. These are more for something I did for Arkansas Governor's School this summer. I'm teaching math and so we would have weekly lessons. And so I did a single Google slide for each lesson, but each slide has so many links and so much information, but it's all kind of in that one place, which is amazing. So this is an example of the initial slide I give my students. And as you can see, there are lots of different things on it. Um, on this slide, if they click on my Bitmoji, it will automatically link them to my email address. They can click on the syllabus link. They can click on homework. There's a graphing calculator. Um, the link to our Zoom. So if we meet every Tuesday morning at 1050, that they click on that Zoom thing. And I don't have it set up where they immediately go to Zoom. I haven't, I'm not that sophisticated yet, even though there may be a way to do that. But it's just something that they click on and it is a PDF made in Google Docs that does the direct link to my Zoom room. Um, they can click on the Instagram thing and sign up for our class Instagram account or they can get reminders and they can they see the calendar, but if they click on it, it will also take them to a calendar. They can click on World's Matthias videos, which are my videos for the course, and lots of different fun things that are hidden. Even the little uh, yellow frowny face, that is a link for our counseling services at our university. We have some online services now because of COVID and they've been busier than ever. So I just wanna make sure students know that I have that link for them. Lots of little fun things are hidden in here as well. But what I've also what I also always try to do is this toolkit link. When you link when you click onto that, it takes you to another Google Doc that is more like a linear listing of all these things. And I've asked students at the end of the courses, what do you prefer, clicking on the pictures or going down the list? And I kind of get about half and half. So I try to have it easy for whatever kind of learning style or learning ac information access method they want. And I think it's been pretty successful. So I will, I'm going to slide this. I'm going to slide. I'm going to share this slide deck with you guys. And this next one, hopefully, 
some of you might find might come in handy for you. This slide deck is just for you guys and each of these things are direct linked to different things to help you get started or maybe even if you do them already, maybe some things you haven't thought of yet. I always kind of add on to this. Um, but I hope that after this, if you're interested at all, please email me whenever you want. I love to work with other people on these and see what other people are doing so I can steal their fun ideas. But this should be kind of like a one stop shop for anyone that's interested that again, I'll share with you guys to help you get started and to remind you how to do certain things. Um, so what I mainly want to do now and answer any questions you have now and then also um, try to create one of these together. So you can kind of see some ideas of like how you can find free images. You don't want to be stealing images from Google, how you can get rid of backgrounds so things look a little cooler, how you can do the transitions, the animations, all of that stuff. So here's my last slide. I think it's now time to design a space together and hopefully Natalie can join us so that she can tell me if there are any questions so far or chats and then we can build one together. Yeah, absolutely. So there have been a couple questions that have come in so far on chat. Um, one is just curious if you use um, Moodle, Canvas, Blackboard, or other, other systems. Um, my school uses Blackboard, mm -hmm. but I don't. <laughs> I don't use it very often. The only thing I post on Blackboard, and I'm not going to lie, is I do not use Blackboard. Please check your ULR email. And so everything I do is just an email to them. But I do also use, since I teach math, we use different things like I'm using Hawks Learning right now. So I do use a learning management system for the homework. And that's basically where I post everything. So I use whatever uh, LMS is tied to the textbook that we use, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and then Janice was wondering, where do you find all of those backgrounds? I will show you in just a minute. Um, a lot of them are my own photos. And that's one of my biggest suggestions to you is if you're like me and you go on vacation, you have a million pictures of stuff that you rarely ever look at, you might be surprised how fun those can look in the background. And if I need a picture of a bookshelf, I'll just take a picture of a bookshelf in my house and get rid of the other background and use it. So my first suggestion is use your own photos. You, you guys, I know you all have some good stuff that you could use, but also I'll show you how you can find free things on, or um, yeah, free or they're like, you're allowed to share on Google. Very cool. So lots, lots of options for backgrounds. Yeah. Um, what about, do you hyperlink um, any of it so students can use the slide deck like a website? Um, oh, everything is hyperlinked, yes. Okay, great. And then we'll try and we'll answer a couple more and then maybe we'll, we'll come back to the, the rest of the questions as you're still going. Okay. Um, I'm just curious about um, how long does your average page take to create or, or bank there? Well, <laughs> I always hate this question because people die. I spend hours on a page, um, but I love this kind of stuff. And I just, it's like therapy to me and it makes me reinvigorated about everything. But I have like, when it's Sunday night and I realize that I have to get my new slide for Monday, I have done it in 30 minutes. I mean, it takes, there is a learning curve at first, but you can do it pretty quickly if you don't, uh, if you don't want it to look, you know, too involved. Mm -hmm. And you can also kind of duplicate, just do a duplicate slide of the one from last week and then maybe just change the picture that's linked to the syllabus. Or, you know, if you want to make it look different or just add a couple more videos and a new homework assignment, you can basically just duplicate your, you could kind of have like a little um, standard slide in that you could just kind of have everything there already and then just change out the photos or whatever else, maybe. Yeah, that's great. So like template, almost like templates then. Yes, absolutely. Great. Well, we have some more questions coming in. Um, and I'm wondering. Go for it. We got to take as long as you want on it. I don't care. Okay. Great. So let me let me ask these couple last ones that, that, that just came in. Okay. Um, Amber was wondering, how do the students know how many links to look for on the slide? That's a very good thing. That's the first thing I do the very first time. Basically, as soon as I have my um, list a course list where I can see what students are in my class and we're about a week or so before class starts I start sending this out to them and challenge them that I say there are five different Easter eggs hidden somewhere in here email me back when you found them all and so and I even do more than five sometimes and so I notice I kind of try to get students to start looking around to begin with the obvious ones like 
homework and stuff is um, is super easy to find. Anything that they definitely need, I want them to look at. I make it really obvious. The things that are more hidden, that are harder to find, are just more like fun things that they don't need necessarily. And could you talk a little bit about the difference between using Google Slides versus something like PowerPoint to create these? Yes. Um, what I like about Google Slides, for one thing, it's free if you have a Google, if you have a Google um, email address and PowerPoint's not necessarily, a lot of people have it, but um, I think it's a lot easier to share everything in my Google, every, basically everything is in my Google Drive already. So any new item that I make for my courses, and I do everything in Google Docs now, so I have automatic hyperlinks. Um, but anything that I want for my courses is already in my Google Drive. And so once it's there, it's super easy to link the sharing. Um, to me, it's a lot easier. I have used PowerPoint and um, Keynote. Great, great. Um, and then there was a, a question about um, uh, if you could talk about your avatar. Oh, my Bitmoji. Well, that's one of the things on here, and it's one of the things on the slide deck. Let me go back to that page. Um, under the to-do list to the right, the first thing it'll tell you how to do your Bitmoji. And the good thing about it is what you, you basically do it on your smartphone or iPad or whatever, but there's a way to have it built into your computer. So, and I'll show you that in a minute where you just always go straight to your slide and then you can animate it if you want and do a lot of fun things with it. Great. Well, maybe let's, I think now would maybe be a good time to, to jump into Okay. Um, yeah, the next yeah. part here. Okay, so I need you, I need the help of you guys to tell me what you want to design. If anyone has a suggestion for a background or um, a lesson, whatever, it can be anything. And I'll kind of show you how I would go about trying to find all the stuff. So does anyone have a suggestion? Yes, I will definitely slide these, <laughs> slide, said it again. I'll definitely share these slides. <laughs> Okay, garden background. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Okay, so what you wanna do is, let me move this so that's not in the way. Um, when you go to Google, let's say we wanna do a garden and we'll go to images and you'll find lots of images. Now, I'm not gonna lie, when I make these for my family trivia, I sometimes do steal pictures from Google that aren't necessarily ones that I'm allowed to share, but if you, Go, once you're in images, if you click on settings, right under kind of the little camera in the Google thing, you can go to advanced search. And at the very bottom, the usage rights, I always go to free to use or share. And so it won't give you as many choices, but especially if you're doing it for something you're sharing with at work or whatever, it's probably a good idea to do it this way. And so we have all of these options. Um, let's see about this one. This one looks pretty. I think Melissa would be happy with that. So I just pull it to my screen and then I go back, let me go back to my slides. Let me erase all this stuff right now. Okay, so you can just literally drag it on and there it is. And, and you can make it bigger, smaller. You can change the background. Like say we want the background to be um, green. You can do that. So you can do lots of different things. There are some templates. Um, I'm a control freak, so I like to start from a total clean screen. But this is kind of how you would get it started. Um, let's say that we want to add my Bitmoji. So on in the right hand corner of my little window, there's a little green box that says Bitmoji. And if you go here, you can my Bitmoji is built in and you can do different things like I could do gardening, maybe. Let's see what it comes up with. And so it will give you a Bitmoji you might want to try. So I'll pull this one on. And it's usually way bigger than you want it or than I want it. But you can kind of size it. You can, uh, if you want, you can flip it over so that it's facing the other way. You can make yourself skinny if you want. Um, but so here's my Bitmoji. And that's how you can link it on there. And you can look through, they have all sorts of different ones. Um, if you use the ones on your phone first and then send them to yourself, you'll probably have a lot more choices. But that's a good thing. And then once you have a Bitmoji, if you notice up at the top where it says animate, um, if you click on that, then it gives you some different choices. So you can, I could make it appear, disappear, fade in, fade, fade out, lots of different fun things. Um, I'll have it fly in from the left. And you can pick what speed you want. You can pick if you want it to just come as soon as you come, come from your last slide or if you want to do a click first. 
and you can kind of try it out. So it'll show my previous slide. And then if I do a click, it'll come flying in. And also, um, I, I'm using the cube transition, but there's lots of different ways you can transition from slide to slide too. So I think it's fun to kind of play with that. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we have our background, we have our Bitmoji. What else do we want to put in here? Does anyone have any suggestions or questions so far? There is a question about um, working with students who need assistive technology. Um, wondering yes. if you add alt, alt text or right, and that's um, if you if you on the slide that I'm going to share with you, this yellow circle accessibility is a great resource that tells you how to do like for students that need screen reader or in in alt text any kind of um, learning differences that you might have. It has a lot of great suggestions, and um, most universities there. Um, Office of Disabilities will have someone that can help you too. Once you have your slide, they can look through it and tell you. In fact, right now I'm teaching a college algebra class and one of my, some, one of my students is blind and she has um, an aide who works with her and I send, everything to, I send everything to the aide at the beginning of the semester and said, will you look and tell me what I need to change? And she said, this all looks great. And so far the student has been able to access everything and has commented that she likes the cats and stuff as well. So I think it's, can, it's not as, um, fun for her probably, but I think that it does work and she's been able to navigate it very well and she enjoys it. And there was another question um, about um, your, your Bitmoji and the kind of shortcut that you showed. So how to get it as an option in your, your Google slide menu, that like quick, quick action that you took there to. Yes. So this, um, oh no, that's not the one, hold on. Where's the Bitmoji? The create Bitmoji. This is a link you have, but let me go to it real quick. You get a um, you get an extension to go to Google Chrome. So basically, once you build, once you download the Bitmoji app on your iPhone or iPad, then you can come to your computer and add it as an extension. And so I always have this little green square at the top that's just that's where my Bitmojis are. And also at the same time, you can opt to have your Bitmojis like on your email so when you're saying you know thanks becky or whatever at the bottom you can include bitmojis there so it's kind of fun especially with your students because it kind of puts a face i don't want to show my real face to them i'd much rather show my cute bitmoji but if i were younger it might be different but it's kind of a fun way to to have a little personality when you're responding to them but that's on these slides as well it tells you totally how to do that we had one more question about um like even getting to the, the yeah. Google presentation, like how do, we, how do we get to Google Slides to begin with? Okay, so you need a Gmail account, but when you go to a Gmail account, if you click in this um, top right-hand corner of Google Apps, that's like where you can find your Gmail and your Google Drive, all that fun stuff. There's this yellow one that says Slides, and if you go to Slides, it will take you there, and you can start one blank. You can start one with, they have lots of different templates to use. You can see here all the different ones I'm working on. But you, that's literally where you go, the same place you would go to get your Google Calendar or your Google um, Drive or Docs, if that makes sense. Great. Yeah, I think, so. um, Myra, let us know if that didn't answer your question. But um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Professor Street. I think that's great. Yeah, and also what um, what I do, and it's on one of the slides I have, maybe you guys will share, but I will do a new Google slideshow for my students. In fact, let me show you real quick what I do that I can share with all of my students. And so this becomes like a discussion board. So this is something I put on the slide I'm giving to you guys. And I just, anyone that can access the link is able to uh, add or subtract stuff. So um, in this case, one of you could come in and erase all my stuff and say it's terrible, but you could also, if you wanted to share any comments or tips, this is a way that you could kind of do a discussion board through your Google Slides as well, because now all of my students have this and they can create their own slide. They can add a slide to the deck. They can add photos. And I've had some really fun things. I had a student who moved to a new house a couple of weeks ago. So she, on our discussion thing, put a picture of her new house and people put pictures of their animals and ask each other questions. And I encourage them to comment. Um, probably only about 
25% of my students like actively seem to be looking at the discussion slide. I, it's not required for me in math. I don't, I'm not really good at discussion boards as a, like a learning tool, but you definitely could have them on here that students can add to and change. Yes, you can definitely restrict it to comments only or just to view only. Okay, let's do that. So let's go back to our other. Someone's asking, how can I add pictures? So let's say we want to add a little, um, we want to add like a little Easter egg or something. So what I do is I'm still under images and I'm still under labeled for non-commercial reuse. So um, what, does anyone have a suggestion for something we could do? I'll do a kitten, how about that? Cause I love cats. Chicken, okay, I like chicken. <laughs> Chicken's fun, I haven't done a chicken before, but I might have to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna do chicken. I'm looking under the free pictures. Oh no, we don't wanna cook chicken. So let's say we use um, this chicken right here. I'm going to pull them over to my screen. And then this is another site that I have on that thing I'll share with you guys. If you go to remove.bg, this is a free site. I use it all the time. It's so fun. You take whatever photo you have and you just dra drag it over and it removes the background for you. So now it's just like a little chicken that doesn't have the whole background so you can float it anywhere and you just download it. I think you might have to pay if you want to solution, but the pictures look good enough to me. And then what I do is I'm just going to move this guy just to my desktop because I like to have everything where I can pull it over. And I have a whole folder of backgroundless creatures and animals and stuff. Okay, so we found him on Google. We removed his background and I think he's up here. So now I'm just gonna drag him and you can size him however you want. So let's say we want him, I don't know, how about that? And so let's use this to Rickroll somebody. So let me find my Rickroll apps. Let me show you what Rickrolling is. So on this guy, if you click on my toilet paper, oops, I don't know why you can't hear it. Maybe it's just the thing. No, let's see if we can't figure out what you are, my little friend where you come from. I saw part of the message you... I seem to have found it. That's right, really. So it's kind of a sneaky way. They don't see right away that it's going to be Rick Astley. So what I'm going to do is I am going to copy and paste this YouTube address. I'm going to go over to my chicken. And you just click on him. And then there's a little thing that looks like a, a paper clip. It says insert link. If you do that, then you just paste the one I just did and do apply. So now anytime they click on the chicken, they'll automatically get Rickrolled. And you could do the same with your Bitmoji if you want. You can link, I usually link it to my email address so students know they can always just get to me easily that way. But that's how you add things. You can um, add, like if you wanted to do a blackboard, I usually look up a blackboard, but let's kind of do the cheap and easy way. I could do like a little square here and make it black. So I have my little blackboard and then you can use your text box and pull it over and I'm gonna change it to white so we can see it. And you can do to-do list. And then on the list, say there's homework, mm, that's too much, test. What you can do then is make that a hyperlink to like if you're linking it to i mean a test probably doesn't make the most sense but if you're if you want to click it to the homework system then you can link any under um underlined words to them as well and i usually try to do like if test is something or say it's a video watch this video to study for the test i will do it where they can click on the word video and it will go to the video and i'll also try to have some little thing in my photo um, in the main slide that says video so they you know some people do it one way and some people like to click on the pictures one question that that just came in is about um if you don't use your university's lms um where do all your weekly slides live basically so if a student accidentally deleted your email yes. um, is there a place they can go to find it or maybe they want to reference it in the future 
Yes. Well, I do it a couple different ways. I email it to them. I email the PDF and the PowerPoint to them. They, I put them in a shared drive, Google drive, just for my class. They can always go to the shared Google drive. And then um, I also post them on the summer on Hawks learning. Cause that's where their homework is. So whatever I'm using, I, do, I don't use Blackboard because I always teach a class that uses either um, Pearson or Cengage or one of those. That's where they go to do their homework and stuff. So that's usually where I post things. And I've always tried to not do both Blackboard and one of those to try to eliminate students having to go back and forth. Um, but I've had students who pretty much say the only thing they do is just download their weekly slide deck to their computer and then they do everything from there. Yes, I think one more question about a, a refresher on, and how do you get the, the background off of the chicken picture or any other okay. picture? Let's do another one. What else do we want a picture of? Did, what did someone say? A squirrel? I probably can't spell squirrel. Luckily it popped up. <laughs> okay, so let's say a squirrel and you, you got to be a little careful about which ones. They have to have a pretty good con, like some of these that there's not much contrast between the foreground and background may not work, but let's try this guy. He's kind of weird, a fox squirrel. So I just dragged them to my thing. And then this is where you go to that website that is called remove.bg. And you just go there. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to do anything. It's completely free. And you just literally drag it over. It removes the background for you. And then I download it. And then I just move it to my desktop. Like I said, you, you don't have to do this step if you would just want to insert it a different way. But like I said, I like to move everything to my desktop and then the end of the day, I'll move all my little critters into a folder that already have all their backgrounds off of them. And so now I can go back to here and I should be able to just drag him over without him having any kind of background. And you can do these of photos of yourself. You can do these of buildings, um, basically anything. And it sounds like there, there's a suggestion here to do a, a transparent image search. Um, yeah. You could, here's another way to do it. Like I said, I like to kind of keep my own little library, so I don't usually do it this way, but you can also go to insert and you can go to image and you can um, search the web this way. And so you could say cat transparent. And then you can do them that way as well. Well, yeah, so d definitely. Um, and that's not a bad way to, that's even easier, except then I don't, you, you know, I don't get to keep them for my thing. But yeah, that's a really good way. And for students, someone just asked like, how do students find like the discussion slides, I think, and how to interact. Those are just in our, our classes, Google Drive that I share with them. And could you talk a little bit about, um, uh, someone commented that that files are sometimes too large to share through PDF or email. So how um, how do you get around that with Google Slides? Um, well, I've never, and I don't know, I don't know. I don't. Maybe I don't have big enough files. I've never had one that was so big that I couldn't share it through Google Drive. So, like with Google Drive, for instance, um, do you know how to share on Google Drive? Or let me do a link real quick. Let's say we're going to our Google Drive, you go to the same place as you would for your slides or calendar. And in Google Drive, let me find something. Um, okay, so let's say I have something that I brought to my Google Drive. This isn't that big, but it doesn't matter because then what you do is if you click on the little three buttons in the top red corner, right corner, and you do share, then you have all sorts of different options. Um, so you can, and, and it depends on if you're going through university, what your university is doing, but I can do it restricted, anyone at my university or anyone with a link. And I usually just use anyone with a link, especially at the beginning of the semester, because a lot of students aren't using their university email yet, and I want them to be able to access it. And then you can also pick it if you want them to just view it, if you want them to be a commenter or a editor. And then what you can do is copy that link right there. So you're not actually having to move a big, huge file. It's just all in the drive, which so far I have never found one that's too big. So if I copy the link, then I can go to my thing and let's let the cat be where they get to that link. You go to your link button, insert link, and then I paste. 
and apply. And so now if they click on the cat, it's automatically shared with anyone in this case, but you can make it just for your students. You can add the names of students or you could say anyone at your college, however you want to restrict it. Um, it's there. And like I said, I've never found a file that's too big for that. Same thing with videos. If you have course videos that you don't want to put on YouTube for whatever reason, like say you did a course, you had a meeting in Zoom with students and you want to, and you recorded it and you want to share it with students that couldn't come. Then what I do is I move it to my drive and do the same thing. You just share it. And so I haven't actually embedded the video in my slide. It just has a link that will take them to the drive to find the video, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's great. I think there was a question earlier about um, embedding videos on on your slide itself. And it sounds like you're often linking people to go to an external site to view it. Yeah, okay. So what is this question? I came in a few minutes late and see that this was already asked, but do you link them from slide to slide? If so, can you show me how to do that? Like, are you asking how to add? Us how to add a new slide to this? Let's, let's do that though. Say to this deck, I want to do another slide. You just go to slide and you just do new slide. There's a new one. Um, I picked to have all black. The first thing I always do is delete decks. Like I said, I like to do my own thing, but I could also like say I wanted to duplicate the slide if you can. It will do the same slide a second time. And so then you can just change certain things if you want trying to embed your Bitmoji. Um, the best thing is to get the Google Chrome extension for your Bitmoji. Oh, yeah, well, that's a good question too. So let's see, he doesn't have a link yet. Let's say that I want to link him to a different slide instead of, because if I click on the cat, it's gonna go, it's gonna open up a new um, tab and take him to a new place. Or if I click on, the chicken, it's going to take him to YouTube to watch it. But let's say I want to click to another slide, then I'm going to click on the squirrel. I'm going to do the link. And then notice where it says slides in this presentation. You can do the next slide, the previous slide. You can kind of play with where you want them to go. So say I want them to go to the previous slide. Um, that way you can link them directly from one slide to the other if you want to build it that way. I do use my uh, university's email server. Any other questions? Anything you want to see how to add? That's a very good question and it's one I'm not exactly sure on. Um, I kind of ran into something. This person's asking what are the legal ramifications of recording students during class and using that. Um, I talked with our um, I think it falls under FERPA, those kind of things, because in class sometimes I'll do I'll have them go in groups and we'll record a video and like how to solve the quadratic formula. And I ask, am I allowed to record them and then show the video in class? And as long as it's just students that are signed up for the same class and only those students in that class, I could share those videos. So my guess is that probably a Zoom video thing works the same way, um, but I'm not sure. Universities may start having students sign releases for that. I don't know. guys have any other questions or anything else you want to try to do that I can try to help you with? Yes, sound is definitely possible. So if you go to um, insert, you can see all different things. You can go to audio. And here's one I did. Let's see if it'll work with this right here. So this is one that I do. It won't work obviously on a PDF, but it'll work on PowerPoint. So this is one I recorded with my students and I usually try to put it right on me. But if they click on it. Hello, welcome to College Algebra. I am so excited to have you in my class. My name is Becky Street. I and so you can definitely make recordings. Um, there, there is a link to right here. I think you have to click on the this purple 
um, paint bottle. It's not as obvious, but if you just do a recording on your phone, at least iPhones, I'm not sure about others, they're always recorded as a M4A file. And Google Slides right now will only take it if it's MP3 or WAVE. And so this is an easy way to just record into your phone and then convert it to WAVE so you can just add it super easily. And you could do music. I guess you could do any sound that you wanted. Um, there's a question about where do you record on an iPhone? Oh, well, <laughs> I, I think it's a standard one. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, that blue one in the second row, quick voice. I think that's just standard. Otherwise, I'm sure you could download apps and there may be even an app you could download that's free that would automatically make it a WAV file or wave. I don't even know how you say it. And, you, and also you can just record onto your computer. In fact, that's easier because what I have to do is when I record on my phone, then I email it to myself and then I download it to my computer and then I convert it. But um, you can do that. The other thing you could do, I use Zoom for this all the time, is I'll make videos of myself talking on, I'll just do a Zoom meeting just for one, for me, and I'll just video, I'll just video tell, videotape myself talking. And you can send that video to students if you want them to see the video and the sound, or you could just do the sound and send that as well. Yes, I'll definitely share this. Um, I think that this slide I is, all the things on this slide totally helped me. And so if you're trying it, I hope they'd help you as well. Okay. Um, yeah, um, someone just asked, just to clarify, when you click on an image, it depends on what the image is. So let's say this image, when they click on, now, let me show you a PDF really quick. Let's save this as a PDF, and I kind of want to show you how that works. If you go over here, you can go to download, and you can download it to your PowerPoint. That's what I always do. But you can also, and this is the easiest thing, is you download it as a PDF. And this is the one that anyone can use. It's super easy. It works on your phone, everything. Yes, download the app on your phone for Bitmoji first. So, so here's the PDF. And so I'll kind of show you how it works when you click on this. So if we click, let me get something I can click on. We'll go right here. Okay, so if I were to click on this, this takes me, in this case, this does take um, them to a Google document. And each of these are hyperlinked. So it'll take them to a website that'll have my video. Okay, so that's like a kind of twofold thing. If you click on this, for instance, this just takes you straight to, in this case, YouTube for a tutorial. You can easily manage your. So it depends on what you're sharing. If you're sharing something that you first did through your drive, it will kind of take them that place. Oh Lord, I don't know where my PDF is now. <laughs> uh, is it behind? Nope. I don't remember. I don't remember how to do it, but, or how to get there, but I don't wanna waste time on that. Um, it just depends. The sound thing, if you click on it, it doesn't take you anywhere, it's right there. Can we animate the slides and use Yes, absolutely. So um, again, animate, let's go back to our little garden. And here, let's say we want to animate the chicken. You click on the chicken. He's already linked to something, but you can also animate it. And I'm going to have him fly in. Um, let's have him do, let me get rid of that one. I'm going to have the chicken fly in from the top. And so when you go to this thing, if you push that, he'll come to the top. So you can animate them in lots of different ways. Yes, you can definitely have access to any of my stuff. And then um, to do the transition between slides, so my slide show was the cube. When you turn it, oh, I got to get rid of that first. When you turn from things to thing, from slide to slide, there's my animation first, sorry. It goes as a cube. 
but you can change those and you can even change a transition just you could do a different transition between each set of slides if you wanted so you can if you just click on um, it's right here transition and then you can pick different things if you want no transition if you want it to slide in from the right and you can pick how fast or slow you want it to be and so i'll just show you if you do play it'll kind of show you so see how it slides in from the right sorry my person's got to fall <laughs> and then oh, I, I wasn't playing it but you can change your transitions that way all you want um it looks like some of the questions are coming in just to us panelists so it, um not, all the attendees can see them so oh. Oh. let's try and repeat the question maybe just in case other folks can't see them okay sorry um, no that's okay I, I we didn't realize they weren't going to everyone so sorry about that um, uh, and then uh, there is a question from Julie a little a little ways back um, about what other add-ons do you use um, I use yeah here's another thing you can do your add-ons and I use a little bit of creator studio I, I use that more for um, well I have used it on here you can do extra animation with that and stuff um, unsplash images is a great one to go to because it has free backgrounds and free great pictures just automatically um, I have Pear Deck and Lucid Chart, but I haven't really used those yet. At my school, basically any add-on you try to do, I have to get permission from our IT department before they'll let me do it. Because every single thing I click on to try, it'll say, this is not whitelisted for your institution. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll wait till there are like four or five add-ons I want to try, and then I'll have to send it to the IT, check and I, IT tech, and I guess he has to check to make sure it's secure or whatever. But I haven't really gotten into add-ons yet. Does anyone have suggestions for good add-ons? Basically, almost everything I've made so far for these slides, I haven't used any of my add-ons. Though I know there's some incredible ones. And then there was a question also about, um, oh gosh, I want to make sure I found it. Um, a couple other questions. Um, can multiple students engage at the same time um, if it's used as a presentation for students in a class? Um, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Um, I wonder if, if there, um, uh, Gail, if you want to clarify that, we can, we can try and make sure we're, we're answering the right question. But I wonder if it's, can multiple people be editing at the same time? Yeah, under tools. What is under tools someone asked or waiting for Gail? Truthfully, I've never used these. Oh, well, right there. <laughs> you can, thank you, I just found something. Look, you can click on hello, and I guess it'll help you uh, record something right there. Maybe, I'm not sure. Or maybe that helps you, I don't know. <laughs> Um, and then Diana had a question. Are you concerned that your work will end up on the internet without your permission? Do you ask students not to share your work? I'm not concerned, but um, I'm sure it could happen. I, I'm not too worried about it. I, I try not to, I don't put anything on here that's identifiable to anybody other than me. And the one thing they can't share is our discussion board. Mm -hmm. So any of my work or anything I have, I don't mind if other people watch my videos um, or anything like that. But you're right, people could have access to all my stuff <laughs> for free. And then it looks like Gail got back. So yes, I think the, the clarifying part there was, can multiple people be editing at the same yes. time? Yes, yes, OK. Um, let's see. Oh, or multiple people using at one time. We give guest presentations in class. So maybe that's maybe that's similar um, if multiple people can basically be in in the deck and, and doing things at the same time. I that I don't know because so far I've only used these in my classes where it's all online and I just send them out to them. Um, I haven't heard of anyone like when they're working on the discussion deck having an issue. I think it's like on any shared Google Doc when sometimes you see the other person typing while you are you sometimes see that but definitely multiple people could be uploading or type in on the shared slide at the same time if that's what you're asking mm -hmm. 
And then Stephanie had a question. Does that mean you have a license through your university if you say that some add-ons are not accessible, like Google Slides, or I'm sorry, Google Classrooms? Um, yeah, it, um, it's, it's kind of that same idea. It depends. I do all mine through my UALR email because I'm doing it for my students and stuff. Um, my husband has a separate Gmail just for himself, and so he has access to a lot of different things. Um, but yeah, different people, it depends on their university, what they have, like Jamboard, for instance, or Google Classroom. And it's kind of the same thing. Like I said, what I've found is if there's something, you know, not too controversial that I want them to add to our Google Suite, they'll do it. And a question from Jen, how do you use it for assessments? Polling, add-on, Pear Deck? I, do, I usually, for um, polling and stuff, I usually use Mentimeter. Meter. Is that how you say it? M-E-N-T-I meter.com. I usually just use that. And I do that more like in my Zoom things. I don't really do that on my Google slide. Yeah, and someone said something about choose your own adventure. I have seen some people that do great virtual escape rooms using Google slides. I thought it would be fun to make one for um, my family Christmas card this year, like, you know, not school related at all, but have a fun Google slide to send them where they could click on different things and see a photo of like what my kids look like and, you know, what's been going on. I think there are a lot of fun things you could do. And could you talk a little bit about your sharing permissions with students? Are you adding them as a viewer um, or at a different level? Or, of it, it kind of depends. For, for our discussion slides that they do, I add that where they can they have they can edit comment and you know they can edit because I want them to not just comment I want them to post their own photos and I've had students say does anyone remember how to translate a parabola or whatever and so other students will answer it that way um, so I give them permission to do all that most of the things the like PDFs most everything else is just a PDF that they can't change they just use it to get to the hyperlinks Great. And then a question about, um, do you know any sites where we can type mathematics related symbols like equations and, and add to the same slides? I or use the same to the slides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, you can, you, if you know LaTeX, you can do it on uh, Google Docs, but that's a pain for a lot of people. <laughs> that's what I do. I type everything on uh, Google Docs with using LaTeX. Got it. Um, and could you share an example of a discussion slide again? Oh yeah, okay, so this, like, I, I don't have access to my student one or I don't wanna show that because of um, students' names are all over it. So if I get, ooh, that's the wrong one. The one that I kind of created for you guys and maybe you could play, when you get this uh, slide deck, you could play with this and try to add to the discussion board. Let's see, is it right here? So this one, there's a way to make it bigger. Oh wait, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I think I know what I'm doing. Okay, so when you guys get this slide deck, I would encourage you to just try clicking on this and you should have, anyone that can get to this should be able to insert anything they want, comments, whatever, if there's a photo you have of your deck that you wanna share, um, that's kind of how I do it for my students. And they all have access to totally edit it. Now, someone could come in and erase other people's stuff. I can go back and look at the history and I've never, I haven't had a problem with it yet, but you know, most students I think are very respectful and are gonna be good about it. I don't know, I don't, um, yes, you can definitely add your slides to learning management system. I don't use Google Form and I don't even know what GoBoard is, but both of those sound amazing. <laughs> I mean, especially the GoBoard. What does the uh, GoBoard do? Casey, did you talk about that? Oh, okay. Yeah, and I think because of all this right now, there are all sorts of cool things that are coming out um, daily. So I think it's a fun time to kind of get, try out stuff. And I think that's why it's important to have things like this where we can share new cool things that are up there because I've never even heard of it, but it sounds like it'd be perfect for math. Sounds like, um, and it looks like that may have just gone to us panelists. So GoBoard, um, oh. uh, Casey was saying, is a, a free service like Zoom, but for math and science. 
Um, and I know we, we have just about five minutes left, but um, in that remaining time, if you have any questions or other comments that you would like to go to the um, to Professor Street or and to everyone else um, attending, um, you can change that in the chat um, little drop down there um, to have your message go to all panelists and attendees. Yeah, and I would encourage you guys, please email me if you have any questions. If, you um, need any help with anything. I'm so excited to help with this. Um, I also just want you to share what you're doing. If you have a cool Google slide, even if you don't want me to be able to click on it, just be able to look at it so it can inspire me. Um, one more question from Lynn. When you create a discussion slide, is that a different option from the drop down menu or do you just change the sharing option? Oh, and I think you, you might be muted. <laughs> Sorry, I changed the sharing option. Um, let's see. And then a question about inserting visual representation of, of data, like a pie chart or bar charts, et cetera. Um, you can, any of those you can just drag on as long as you have it as some kind of image. Um, that's pretty easy. A lot of times what I do is drag those to a Google Doc first, and so I can have hyperlinks because I like everything to, I like them to be able to link really easily. So I'll do that as a Google Doc first and then link it that way, but you can just drag it onto your slide if you want. Great. Um, and then there are a couple questions about um, how will this be shared? Um, and that's a good question. I think on Coursero's and I, we may need to, to look into that, but. Um, uh, yeah, I will definitely put it on my Coursero um, profile, but also here I just entered, oops, I need to say to everybody, huh? Um, I'm going to give you my email address. If you email me, I will send it to you right away. There's my email address. I'd love to hear from all of you guys. Oh, and I think it should be should be in the chat. Um, yep, there we go. Great. All right. Um, Professor Street, thank you so much for such a fun session um, and for everyone tuning in. Um, thanks so much for being here and we hope to see you in, in future sessions uh, throughout the day and, and tomorrow. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you.